Okay. Good. Okay. Um, good practice, and you know, just a lot of focus on getting ourselves prepared to play a, a really good game against a very, very good opponent. So I could run out of things to tell you guys when I come over here. I sound like a broken, broken record. So. That's because you want to talk about schemes. Yeah. <laughs> What are the positives and negatives playing a team that uh, has only had one game? Uh, I guess if there was a, a negative, it's that we don't have a lot of film on them, and they'll probably be a little more fresh. Uh, the positives are, you know, we have a little bit more game experience, but I don't know that that's a real positive. I think what's important is that regardless of the circumstances, you just go out and execute and play hard and play aggressive and, and uh, you know, play technique sound and win. So. I don't know, we don't really put a lot of thought into that, quite frankly. It's not really anything that's on our radar. You have one huge positive stat. They are uh, have a bad record of playing their first game on grass every season. Yeah. I, I, you, don't, you don't look at those things? No. No, that's a, completely irrelevant to this game. All statistics are, in my opinion. I mean, you know, statistics change weekly because they change weekly. So yeah. we don't look at that stuff. I, I would have never known that one. <laughs> Joe, uh, Joe Fourier looked like he struggled a little bit in the last game blocking. Um, is that something that he's just kind of naturally going to struggle with because he's so tall, or is that a? You know, he's getting better at it. It's just you know when you're six foot eight or seven, seven and a half, eight, whatever he is, it's just going to be hard to get leverage. And uh, he works hard at it though, you know. And it's just about bending his knees and, uh, and playing low, and uh, you know, constantly reminding himself to get down because once he does get under a guy, he's got. He's got power. You know, we've seen him drive guys off the line of scrimmage, and uh, but he's got to continually work on just bending, and getting low, because blocking is so much about leverage. It's hard when you're six eight. How much better does your run D have to be this week? Uh, they have a couple of damn good running backs. Well, our run D's been outstanding, actually, except for quarterbacks, which I don't consider real runs. These guys right. run real, real plays, and when teams have tried to run real runs against us, we've been pretty good. Uh, but it really has to be good because they're going to pound it. You know, they're not a spread team. They'll give you some spread formations, but they're not a spread team. They're going to uh, they're going to give us some conventional runs. They run powers and they run lead draws and they run split bellies and bellies and isos and you know stretches and the inside and the outside zone and you know like real live run plays. So we have to be on it. We have to have great gap control. We have to be patient. We have to get, have play good play entry, good leverage on the ball. We have to put our bodies on the ball carrier. You know, against these backs, arm tackles are not going to do it. So we really have to be on it. It's a, it's definitely a, a point of emphasis for us this week. Individually, has anybody on their squad kind of popped to you? Um, well, just their, their front, their defense. You yeah. know, not, not as a, not necessarily as an individual, but just as a group. I mean, they just play really well together. They're very disciplined. They're sound. They play really hard. They they have great effort. Uh, people don't get in behind their secondary. It's hard to run on them. Uh, their linebackers are active. I mean, they're they're a really good-looking defense. Their coach, Coach Banker, does a great job with them. It's fun. If you if you appreciate good defense, it's fun to watch that team play. When you're getting ready to play them, it's not necessarily fun to watch them play. How exciting is it to have your your quarterback throwing uh, over 70 percent right now? And that's good. That's you know you want to be efficient. Uh, the thing we have to do is cut down on errors. You know. Um, 70% is good unless, you know, 10% of that other 30% is going to the other team, you know. So we just have to make sure that we're doing a good job of running the right routes, giving him good protection, and that he's doing a good job of reading his progressions and making good decisions. But, you know, after three weeks, I think Brett's shown a lot of maturity. He's shown a lot of growth, and we can expect him to continue. There's going to be some inconsistencies in his game just because of his age and because of experience, but um, he's getting better every day. You see it out here at practice, and then it, it translates onto the field. Any sense of uh, heightened urgency now that it's conference play? You know, I, I think so. I think so. I mean, you really want to treat every game the same. You know, that wants to, that, that that should be your message, so that you don't have inconsistencies in your play. But I, I don't think you can deny the fact that conference games are, you know, very important. You know, more important. Um, but that's not something we talk to the team about, really. You know, we talk to the team about maintaining a consistent level of preparation and play, regardless of who we're playing. You know, trying to play to our standard rather than that of the competition. So, uh, so you know, it's a kind of a delicate thing. You know, you don't want to overemphasize games. I think when you overemphasize games, then you set yourself up for a let letdown the next the next week.
kind of equate this over here back to divisional games. Yeah, you know what makes them, I guess what makes them, sorry, what makes them maybe more intense is that there's uh, familiarity. You know, in, in the NFL, you play your division opponents twice. In college, you, I guess in the Pac-12, you don't play them every single year, but, you know, there's that familiarity amongst the coaches, really amongst some of the players. Uh, and, uh, you know, you develop some rivalries. So it's, I mean, it's fun. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm excited to play these guys. You know, I'm excited to see what it's like to play in a Pac-12 game. You know, Pac-12 versus Pac-12. I haven't done that in a while. So. Speaking of the NFL, uh, Steve Sable passed yesterday. Did you know him well? Did you get to Very know? close friends with my family. Really? Me and my dad were extremely close. I was extremely close with him every year at the league meetings. Uh, my wife and I would go out to dinner with him. So, yeah, heart goes out to his family. He was a great man. Great man. And really, really, they shaped the way we watched this game, no, didn't they? Oh, yeah. His, he and his father, Ed, I mean, they were pioneers. Yep. And that's why they've got all this Emmys sitting in their offices. I don't know if you've ever been to NFL Films, but it's an no. amazing place. And, uh, you know, the things that they did with regards to uh, miking coaches, miking players, you know, uh, getting in the locker rooms after games, uh, that thing that HBO does, you know, yep. the, I don't know what they call hard it. Hard knocks. Training. Yeah, hard yep. knocks, all that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, yeah, there's something. Aaron Hester last year against Oregon State had 11 tackles, six on the run. Is that just his good sense for pursuit? I didn't watch last year's game. I wouldn't hopefully. But a cornerback who can still make plays like that against the run. Uh, if they're running perimeter runs and they were in a – I don't know what kind of defense they played. So, I mean, I don't know if they were playing cover two or – if they were playing cover two, then he should have runs like that or tackles like that. If they were playing three deep, it means somebody else was missing a tackle. So, unless I lifted the film, I, I couldn't give you an accurate answer. I don't know. So, yeah. When was the last time you got off personally one of your teams to this kind of a start? Uh, 2004, 2005, and I think 2006. I think we might have started 4-0 or 3-0 all three of those years. I'm not sure. Good start, though. I mean, there's a pride factor in there, too, right? Uh, what do you mean? Well, I mean, just from a personal standpoint, to say, hey, you know, we, we've taken over this program, and now we're moving on. I, I don't look at it that way myself. Really? I mean, that's okay if outside people do, but my focus has to be on the week and the game we're playing. And unless it is, then you set yourself up for failure. So I've learned through the years uh, to stay very, very focused on the task at hand, and that's Oregon State this week. You know, I know that when I was younger, I've made a lot of mistakes. I'm trying not to make them again. <laughs> <laughs> made a lot of mistakes. Just trying not to make them here. <laughs> done make, try, I'm trying to be done making mistakes that hurt a football team. So, I got you. All right. Okay. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thank you.